Hey guys, Jeremy here from School of Walk Covent Garden. It is Walk Less Wednesday again, and this week we've got two recipes in one. A tonkatsu, a Japanese fried pork chop, and then we're gonna do a tonkatsu sando, sandwich style. Ow. <laughs> So, tonkatsu, crispy pork, really, Japanese style. You know, I've got these great looking pork chops here. The fat's on it, but I'm gonna take the f most of that fat off. I'm just gonna leave a sort of thin layer around the outside. I'm gonna cut the bone off this one, because I wanna make a nice katsu sando, a Japanese sort of pork katsu sandwich with this one here. But for both, it's good to sort of hammer the meat a little. Flattens it out, but also tenderizes the meat. If we had all night to marinate it as well, then all that flavour would sit into the meat even more. Right, so I've got some garlic in there, I've got some sesame oil for my marinade. A little bit of salt, pepper, and a pinch of sugar. Give that a good rub round each piece of meat. And this may not be a traditional way of doing things, but I quite like to pack a bit more flavour into the actual pork before I cover it. So that's pretty much there. I'm gonna start to panko this up. Just give my hands a quick clean. Pankoing or breadcrumbing my pork, whether it's pork, chicken, fish, whatever it might be, it follows the same principle. This panning is definitely a French technique, not a Japanese. So we're going to season that plain flour with salt and pepper. Mix that round nicely. And then dip your pork into the flour. And then from the flour, straight into your egg. I probably should have used a bigger tray for this, but okay, that'll do. And then from your egg to the pan coat. And that is a big piece of pork, I think, because of the fat, so. But it might, I'll cook it like that and then we can cut it afterwards. So this guy here is for my sandwich, or my sando. And then my pork with bone on will go nicely just on its own. There's nothing healthy about this dish at all. It's definitely one of those cheat day sort of meals. So. They are ready to either deep fry or pan fry. I'm gonna shallow fry it in the pan over here. And then we've got some tonkatsu sauce, some mustard, some cabbage on the side. Really, really simple. So when you're shallow frying something like this, you still need a good amount of oil so that you can get an immediate seal of the breadcrumb. Bring it to a high heat first, and you can always bring the heat down to make sure that the meat and the bone cook through nicely. I'll cook the, the tonkatsu with the bone on first, just because I know that that bit's a little bit thicker. And then I'll introduce the second piece for my sandwich. So that oil's nice and hot. So I'm gonna lay my first piece in just bring the heat down to medium to high heat so that the 
breadcrumbs don't burn too quickly. It's going to take about sort of four minutes, four to five minutes on each side. So at this point, bring it right down to sort of just under medium, low to medium heat. Let that cook through nicely. My pork chop with the bone in has had so two, three minutes on one side. So I'm going to add this guy in. Sit on a medium heat here. Don't mind whacking the heat up a little bit whilst that goes in, just to bring the pan to temperature again, but then bringing it back down to medium so that they both cook through nicely without burning that panko. Of course, if you're deep frying this, it'd be a lot quicker, easier to go all the way round, but this is definitely the healthier way to do it. You've got a nice golden brown colour on one side and you want to whack the heat up again just so it gets the initial sear. And look at that colour there. When it's cooked on a, the right heat, that sort of medium heat, it works and you get that golden brown finish. So high heat whilst you're turning. Same again. Great colour on that side there. And that instant sear from that high heat and then bring the heat down to medium to cook again for another to five minutes. I'm just pushing into the meat here to make sure that every part of the panko crisps up nicely. So it's had its five minutes on either side, nice and crispy on both edges, look at that. Definitely cook through now. Slice into this tonkatsu around the bone. Leave that for someone else. We've got a little bit of finely chopped cabbage here. Can just lift up that bone, let that wilt underneath. And tonkatsu sauce, you can buy these days in jars, so I'm keeping it really simple here. This is pretty much like a Japanese brown sauce. Put some mustard here for my sandwich. And actually, with the sandwich meat, that is clearly too big for one sandwich. I'm just going to cut it in half, get that ready. With your sandwich, if you want to just take a whole new dish from that one bit of fried meat. I've got the rest of my cabbage here. I'm going to fry that off and then I'm going to pop the cabbage into my cheap bread. It's got to be cheap bread. And then we'll finish the toast off, kind of like a buttered toasty in the frying pan with your tonkatsu in the middle, and a little bit of that brown sauce, a bit of mustard. Oh, heaven. High heat. You don't want to overcook your cabbage. There's enough butter in the bottom of my pan there. Shouldn't really be using this metal implement on here, but okay. Just turn that down to a bit of a medium heat there. Pop your toasty in. Press down nicely. I'm going to flip that straight away. So toast the other side. Again, just press into that. It does catch quite quickly. Look at that great colour. My mouth is watering and I'm not even hungry today. Right, so. That sandwich bread is ready. Good chunk of that tonkatsu. Your brown sauce or your tonkatsu sauce. So I've actually got some mustard here, I'm just watering it down a little. 
So I want to be able to get a sort of a, a nice even spread of mustard over my tonkatsu. This is naughty. Getting your toasted bread over the top. Cut that. So, one recipe, two dishes in one, neither of them healthy, just really tasty. I'm gonna go for the all-in-one tonkatsu sandwich. That spread of mustard over the top just sets your palate on fire. It's brilliant. I like this recipe. If you like this recipe and you want to learn more like this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.